Hey guys, Jared Lloyd here from the Journal of Wildlife Photography. I am in the northeastern portion of Minnesota right now, driving around in the snow looking for great gray owls. And I just wanted to take a moment to create this video to discuss a question that I got via email the other day. Now this question comes from Chris Johnson and specifically asks whether or not with today's kind of newfangled technology, if you will, if we still need to worry about having lenses or buying lenses that have a maximum aperture of f2.8. Now you go back to the 1980s, the 90s, um, and you know every wildlife photographer, every nature photographer out there was saying that you needed to buy lenses with 2.8 apertures, right? That this was what kind of qualified a lens oftentimes as a pro level lens. Now when it comes to wildlife photography, first and foremost, the really big super telephoto lenses that we're using, you can't buy them in 2.8, right? So we're kind of limited to 400 millimeters at that point. When you get into the 500 millimeter or the 600 millimeter range, you know, we're limited to F4 as our maximum apertures with these things. Um, but it does make a big difference to be using a lens that has the largest possible aperture. It doesn't mean that you're always going to use this. It doesn't mean that if you have a 400 to that you're always going to be shooting at f2.8. Doesn't mean that if you have a 600 f4, you're always going to be shooting at f4. What it does mean though, is that when you need it, you've got it. And sometimes you really, really, really do need this. So low light conditions, for instance, like let's take where I'm at right now in Minnesota in the snow, photographing great gray owls. These are what we call crepuscular species, meaning which that they hunt and feed at the edges of light basically, right? So in other words, very low light conditions. So if I have a 400 f 2.8 lens and I'm shooting at 2.8, that actually means the difference between using say, hypothetically 6400 ISO and 12,800 ISO. So ask yourself this, if you're somebody that does not want to crank up your ISO to 12,800 in a low light situation, then yeah, absolutely we want to be working with f2.8 or at f4 with the longer lenses. Um, and if you're somebody that has no problem cranking those ISOs up, then by all means, we could potentially shoot with a little bit smaller apertures like 5.6 or 6.3. Now, of course, price does make a big difference with all of this sort of stuff. You know, a 600 millimeter F4 lens is about a $12,000 lens. You can buy several used cars for that price. Likewise, you know, a 400 F2.8 lens, also about a $10,000 lens. So we want to basically work with inside of our budgets, obviously, but we also want to make sure that we are purchasing and photographing with the fastest possible lens that we can afford. And by fast, what that means is we're working with lenses that have the largest aperture or the smallest possible f-stop that we can afford essentially. So more to the point of, I think what Chris is ultimately getting at with this question here is given that we have the ability to you know, adjust our exposure and adjust our shadows and stuff like that in these post-processing programs like Photoshop or Lightroom, you know, do we really need to have these super fast lenses in the field? Yes, we do. And that's because noise itself is created by a lack of information. Now in digital photography, information means light. So the lack of light creates noise in our photographs. That means that when we underexpose an image, we introduce noise. The more we underexpose, the more noise we've introduced to the situation. Likewise, when we bring our images over into the computer to work with in Photoshop and Lightroom, when we open up our exposure, we introduce noise. When we open up the shadows, we introduce noise to our photographs. And so likewise, with the difference between say 6400 ISO versus 12,800 ISO in the field, if you're a person that cares about noise in their photographs, if you're a person that wants the cleanest possible image you can make, then this really does matter both in the field in terms of the ISOs that you can get away with and in terms of back behind the computer uh, with adding additional noise by tweaking the exposure and the shadows and stuff like that. And so if you're a person that cares about the noise in your photographs, then yeah, this concept 
this difference between 2.8 and f4 or f4 versus 5.6 really does make a huge difference in terms of the noise that we are going to either create in our images in the field or we are going to inadvertently add to our images when we're behind the computer. But there's another element to all of this because really, I gotta be honest, you're actually the only person that really cares about the noise in your photographs. Editors don't care about this sort of stuff. You know, photo buyers don't care about this sort of stuff. You know, when somebody's trying to purchase a uh, 40 by 60 print for their wall, you know, they're not looking at this thinking about, you know, whether or not there's a little bit of grain in the background. You know, when a photo editor for, let's say, National Geographic magazine, for instance, is looking, you know, at your photographs, they're not contemplating whether or not there's a little bit of noise in the shadows or whatnot. That's that's just not an issue. It's a total non-issue except for digital photographers. We've kind of become completely obsessed with this concept of noise-free images and technical perfection when in the real world, when it comes to actually making a living with our images, none of it matters. Like I said, you're the only one that actually cares about this sort of stuff. But what does matter is artistic vision, is our ability to isolate a subject, to make a decision whether or not we want to include certain things, certain compositional elements, or exclude certain compositional elements from a photograph. And so this is really where, for most of us, the difference between an f2.8 lens versus f4 versus 5.6 really comes into play. And so if you're one of those people that love these almost kind of ethereal, very dreamy, very magical images where the foreground elements are just so beautifully blurred out and creamy, where the background is so filled with all of this gorgeous bokeh, then you're somebody that's probably going to want a 2.8 lens. If you're somebody that uh, photographs in forest, let's say in the rainforest like myself, or again here in Minnesota looking for great gray owls and stuff like that. If you're somebody that's working in these environments a lot where there's a lot of clutter, where there's a lot of other stuff in the environment, a 2.8 lens is going to make a huge difference in terms of your ability to isolate your subject and to help focus your viewer's eye on that owl or songbird or sloth or whatever it happens to be that you're photographing. Again, it doesn't mean that you're always going to use 2.8 for everything. You know, let's say you're in Yellowstone National Park and you're photographing bison, you know, a head and shoulder portrait. You're probably going to be using f8 in that sort of situation specifically to be able to capture depth of field enough to create focus from the nose to the shoulders in that picture. But in other situations, you are going to want those larger apertures to really soften up the composition or isolate our subject. So for me, when it comes to the difference between 2.8 and f4, or f4 and 5.6, it's more of an artistic consideration than it is whether or not it's going to introduce noise or whether or not I can open up the shadows or the exposure or whatever in post-processing programs. I do want to create the cleanest photographs I possibly can. I don't over obsess about the noise, however, just because I've never not sold a photograph because there was noise in the background. What sells photographs, and that's ultimately kind of the point of it for me since I do this for a living, what sells photographs is the story, the composition, the impact, whether or not that image speaks to the person that's trying to buy it. So I'm far more concerned with whether or not it's communicating what I see in my mind's eye than I am about noise. But what that does mean though is using apertures like f2.8 or f4 with the longer super telephoto lenses does become extremely important to me and my style of photography in order to kind of communicate that artistic vision. So Chris's question was actually a really good one. Should we be using f2.8 lenses? Do we really need to worry about these crazy expensive lenses nowadays that we have high ISO capabilities and we have the ability to, you know, really kind of tweak our photographs and, you know, add light and open up exposures and stuff like that in post-processing. I mean, it speaks to kind of the heart of so many different things from you know what this really means what 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 noise is first and foremost how we expose our photographs and how important actually understanding the histogram is in terms of being able to capture the highest quality images possible but more important and more near and dear to my heart it also speaks to this concept of artistic vision and what we actually want to communicate, what we're seeing in our mind's eye and what we as visual artists want to show the world. 
And so thank you so much, Chris, for sending in this great question to me. And hopefully I was able to answer it in a way that makes sense to you. For the rest of you that are watching this, you know, please send me your questions. If you got a good one, I'll pick it out and uh, I'll make it the next question and actions. Um, and let me know what you think about this whole video concept, right? So in the past, all of these question and action uh, things that I was doing were done by email. And, uh, and I thought, you know what? It might actually be a little bit more fun, maybe a little bit more interesting for you you guys uh, if I make a video out of these things in order to be able to kind of discuss this with you. Now I realize that the nice thing about an article is that you can sit down, you can reread, and of course I don't have to fumble through concepts. I've got plenty of time to kind of think through my answer, make it sound eloquent, make you guys think I'm a lot more intelligent than I really am probably. Um, and so that might actually be a better delivery for you guys. But I wanted to at least try it. You know what I mean? I mean, what else am I doing right now? Like other than trying not to get stuck in the snow, which unfortunately I did this morning. I slipped off the side of the road, went into four feet of snow and had to sit around for two hours until somebody came by to, you know, I could hook up my toe strap and get yanked out so luckily we've got all four wheels on the snow I'm driving around you can see there's a little bit of traffic here and so uh, you know I was able to make this video but let me know what you think I really want to know if you want to see more of these videos or if you would prefer the old-fashioned method of question and action articles cheers <laughs>